Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm truly honored to be by the invitation to address this premier summit on the value and importance of education. I would like to thank Digital Learning Magazine, the All India Council for Technical Education, the Elise Technomedia, and others, as well as the leaders that direct these important organizations for co-hosting this important summit. It gives us all an opportunity to exchange ideas, experiences, and knowledge on a sector of sustainable development which every country in our immediate region and beyond needs to invest in, in order to make our shrinking world a better and safer place for all humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, as we know from the experience of developing countries, most notably from the experience of India, investing in education is the most, the single most effective means of reducing poverty. Indeed, Education is more than reading, writing, and arithmetic. It is one of the most important investments any country can make in its people and its future. Please allow me to cite a few vital impacts that education can have on any society. Education gives people critical skills and tools to help them better provide for themselves and their children. Education helps people work better and can create opportunities for sustainable and viable economic growth now and into the future. Education <coughs> helps fight the spread of HIV, AIDS and other diseases, reduces mother and child mortality and helps improve health. And education encourages transparency, good governance, stability and help fights against craft and corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, just 12 years ago, Afghanistan was one of the most isolated countries in our region and the world over. Immediately after the fall of the communist regime in early 1990s, the education sector began crumbling in Afghanistan. In the years that followed, the Taliban denied half of our population, including girls and women, their basic human rights to education. Schools and universities gradually closed as they lacked faculty, a modern curriculum, and other basic teaching and learning materials and equipment for faculty and students. These unprecedented setbacks in the history of education sector in Afghanistan led to one of the highest student absentee rates in the world. In effect, our massive losses in the education sector came to be called the mother of all tragedies, engulfing Afghanistan under the Taliban. Ladies and gentlemen, today we understand the quintessential value and importance of education in the long-term stabilization and development of our country. Our progressive constitution, after the fall of the Taliban, recognized education as one of the most basic human rights of of all Afghan citizens. Since then, the government of Afghanistan has committed steady political and financial support to ensure adequate investment in the education sector. From 2007 to 2011, our recurrent budget for education had increased by an average of 32% each year. The planned budget for the three subsequent years has seen an average annual increase of 12 percent, or an increased budget of 157 million U.S. dollars in total. Additionally, the international community has provided Afghanistan with ongoing on-budget and off-budget support to strengthen the education sector. International assistance has mostly focused on building primary and secondary schools across Afghanistan, providing Afghans with access to education for the first time in some parts of Afghanistan. As a result of our collective efforts, every day nearly 10.5 million Afghans, 40% of them are girls, attend schools throughout our, our country. Of this, 
more than 130,000 students. 20% of them of girls are busy studying at over 100 public and private education, higher education institutions across Afghanistan. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, NATO forces are withdrawing from Afghanistan. As we increasingly take over international military and civilian aid programs to secure and rebuild our country. This transition process is currently underway and should be completed by the end of 2014. But for this process to succeed in the long term, it is important that more attention be placed on democracy and development. And the best way to do this is by investing in the education sector in order to ensure the irreversibility of the transition process. It is a universal fact that education constitutes the backbone of any peaceful and prosperous society. Without education and employment opportunities, the continued expansion of Afghanistan's youthful population will provide a fertile ground for organized crime and violent extremism to flourish, thereby endangering peace and security. And of course, without educated citizens, the values of democracy and liberty will not be institutionalized to ensure protection of the basic human rights of the Afghan people, particularly women who suffered the most under the Taliban. Today, in spite of 12 years achievement in the education sector, the enemies of Afghanistan and regional stability often target our academic personnel and education facilities across Afghanistan. Terrorists who operate out of safe sanctuaries across Afghanistan, across the border, have burned down our schools, killed our teachers and students, and thrown acid on the face of innocent school children. These terrorists consider the education of Afghans as an existential threat to their misguided anti-Islamic ideology of hatred. Where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught the Muslim community to seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. The terrorists and those who support them continue to twist the core tenets of Islam to fit their short-sighted geopolitical agenda against region development and prosperity through education. Unfortunately, we have seen in our region that when modern education is not given a chance to provide opportunities for human progress and welfare, violence and chaos will naturally follow. For this widening trend to change course in the right direction, the countries of the region must stand firmly united against any force be them state or non-state actors who deliberately undermine efforts aimed at education of regions promising youthful populations. Afghanistan is a primary victim of such anti-education designs with external roots. And we renew our call on India and all other regional cooperation mechanisms, particularly the SARC, to address this great, grave threat to regional stability. Ladies and gentlemen, the people and government of Afghanistan are grateful to India for leading international education aid programs in our country. The focus of India's effective assistance on institutional capacity building through the education sector has paid off manifold. Most of Afghanistan's public and private institutions benefit from the Afghan capacity generated through Indian assistance. Currently, Nearly 7,000 Afghans student, students are busy studying at universities and technical schools across India, preparing to return home armed with technical know-how and skills to drive the stabilization and development process of Afghanistan beyond the transition phase after 2014. In the years ahead, we only look forward to India's increased assistance in this sector with a focus on technical skill development in Afghanistan. This is best achieved through re-establishment of a university-to-university -university collaboration between Afghanistan and India, as well as
faculty and education and student exchange programs which formerly existed and were of immense help to Afghanistan. Education, educational cooperation through such sustainable mechanisms will go a long way in enabling our country to slowly rise with the rest of the region towards the vision of an economically and socially integrated region. Indeed, the realization of such a grand vision, which is the aspiration of the peoples of our region, will, will need bold political will and leadership in the region. And it will take time too, but now is the time for all stakeholders to act in the institutionalization of peace and democracy through education. Thank you once again for the opportunity to share with you my thoughts today. I wish you the very best today and tomorrow.